There's a pretty good chance that by this point you've heard of Log4j, Log4Shell, or at the very least you could have swore you've heard something about Minecraft being hacked. Maybe you've been seeing zero day attack trending and you're not sure what it means on our global apocalypse bingo cards, but you know that we haven't put a big squishy marker dot on zombies yet. <laughs> it doesn't involve human zombies, but zero day attacks are a kind of a big deal. And the log for shell exploit was one of the most massive implementations the cybersecurity community has ever seen. So you wondering about them isn't paranoid. It's proper. Welcome to my privacy series, Properly Paranoid. I recently did a privacy panel with law experts that I will drop in a couple of weeks. You'll really want to watch that, That's that we talk for a couple hours. But let's first get you set up. And like every good functional morning, it starts with Java. Uh, only instead of liquid wakefulness, it's the programming language from the 90s. As Java proudly reminds us anytime we need to update over 3 billion devices plus run Java, at least not counting Java running on every Android phone in existence, this particular zero day vulnerability gives hackers a way that they can use a zero day exploit to launch a zero day attack. Okay, but what does that actually mean? A zero day attack is quite simply when hackers find the vulnerability before the vendor does. The vendor in this instance isn't operating a cart for delicious street tacos, but instead the company either develops or acquires software. Either they've built it or they've just bought it and run it. Zero day events are named that way because there's zero days to fix it. It's already a problem. The three words used in conjunction with zero day attacks are vulnerability, exploit, and attack, which really refer more to order of operations than anything else. And a zero day vuln is a software vulnerability that's used before it's discovered by the vendors, giving again, zero days to be fixed. So a uh, zero day is a mechanism or a um, method which the attackers use and the zero day attack is, you guessed it, the attack itself. So zero day attack. The thing that makes zero days such a big deal are not unlike what makes heart attacks such a big deal. You don't know you're gonna have one until you have one and when you do, it's never a good thing, so. What happens if you get the heart attack or it gets into your system? So they got into your system, but no worries. It's a machine that's a decade old, ready to relinquish its grip on the great circuit board of life and take the final cat five into the great beyond. Well, maybe not cat five because 10 years old, but you get the drift. Um, it's fine because you don't keep anything important on there. And well, here's the thing. Even if you don't have any useful assets, or even after the attackers liberate you from your non-useful assets, they'll actually straight up hijack your rig and turn it into a zombie machine in a botnet. And no, I'm not just making those words up, and this isn't just one of those many instances where something pops up from a sci-fi culture or game word vocab cre creeps in, um, fracking frell. See if you can get that reference. <laughs> um, no, a, a botnet is a real thing. So a botnet, in short, is a network of hijacked devices used to carry out things. Um, so things is non-specific, I realize, but we're talking like scams and cyber attacks. So in the network of bots, well, a network of bots is a botnet. So you might not even know that you've been compromised. Uh, there were many network infiltrations that haven't been acted on yet. They're just hanging out over the data stream, waiting for something worth their time to float by. So there's a bigger picture here. One of the scariest parts of the log for shell situation is that it's not just your home computer or phone. It's not just if you happen to play Minecraft and get on Twitter or shop on Amazon, all of which were affected by the way. Devices from the IoT, the internet of things ranging from simple consumer products to medical devices can be subject to this exploit. 
Smart devices like security cameras, TVs, you name it, can be vulnerable to their vendors if they rely on Log4j. So this is literally everything. And this is scaling all the way up to governmental systems and infrastructure. Affected vendors in this instance include smart vehicle manufacturer Tesla, which not to tangent, but you should definitely look at uh, a DEF CON talk about how easy it is to pop Tesla. Um, that's neither here nor there, but let's talk Tesla now and log for shell. Um, can you imagine if your car suddenly started doing whatever it wanted or more so whatever it was being directed to do by an unseen agent? That's kind of reminds me of that Doctor Who episode where the car just like drove into a lake because the GPS told it to. Um, kind of scary stuff. Uh, that is like sci-fi nightmare fuel, but it is entirely plausible with zero with zero days, and um, especially ones of that this magnitude. So it's far from hyperbole. Like experts in cybersecurity have been describing the scope of this log for shell exploit, and it exists in government systems, medical systems, military systems, infrastructure. But there is good news. The good news, the good news, there is good news. Log4j can be patched. I think it's 2.17.1. Patches the vuln. Okay? Woo! Cannot be understated. We'll do a dance. Please have some effects happen here so we cannot be understated. There is a patch and it works. Yeah, okay, you knew I was gonna say a but. Uh, the bad news is, is that if somebody's already gained access, you're just hammering the particle board over the hole behind them, okay? And not to mention all of our people in InfoSec and IT that are scrambling to deal with this now. So let's talk about why it matters in video games. Video games are just another route of access, okay? Let's talk about it. Not just individual older games like Minecraft, but massive game platforms like Steam. It's not just your system's information or personal usage data, it's methods of payment and network maps, okay? Another goal of these attacks is to further the scams that they're already doing by appropriating accounts and impersonating legitimate users to social engineer and do that malware transfer. Even if their malware is them just letting themselves through for one unlocked window above the kitchen sink, you know, it, it means they're just creeping around and they might be waiting to see if you bring home some good groceries or they might just be setting up a base of operations in your attic. <laughs> Not something you want either way. Gaming platforms offer up users, networks, and connections at an exponential rate, and there's nothing to say that these aren't being offered up for sale. Let's just say someone has a large-scale attack that they need a botnet for. Remember those? Those lurkers just fire up their remote commands, and then the computer you thought was fine is now a zombie machine doing whatever someone else is telling it to do. Like how I did that zombie tie back in? <laughs> I, everything's zombies nowadays, isn't it? Realistically, there's not anything you can do about zero-day attacks because of their very nature. They happen because the attackers discovered a vuln before the vendors. You don't know that there's a problem until it arises, right? Cybersecurity experts agree that it's more important than ever to use best practices, suggesting that, you know, the user limits the number of vendors that they use because, you know, if you don't have the software, then you're not being compromised through it, right? So I just kind of wanted to break down zero day attacks, talk a little bit about zero day for someone who doesn't know what it is and, you know, bring properly paranoid back because I love talking about privacy. I did it for three hours with uh, two law professors and specifically geared towards privacy and one um you know insanely renowned open software advocate uh that talks about fet the fediverse if you don't know what the fediverse is you should definitely check out that panel and that panel is actually going live thanks to gb fest we are launching our very first ever open source culture conference um 
I did a really corny intro video about it. It's really close to my heart. If you guys don't know what Geek Beacon is, uh, it's essentially my community that was born from my YouTube channel. And, you know, I know a lot of people, a lot of creators have communities that are named after them, and that's fine. They do them. That is cool. I wanted something that was more of a community and not just kind of a, a veil of a community. I really wanted it to be geeks helping other geeks and i'm so happy to see geek beacon blossom into the six thousand strong it is over on discord and we're we've been giving money to the electronic frontier foundation a lot of really cool things are happening and we have a two-day event one is all about user privacy digital civil liberties you know what i like to talk about um you know open source software and the second event is covering mental health or the second day is covering mental health and accessibility where uh, i interview a 90% staffed by blind individuals that they create uh, games. And, and that's just like one small sliver. We have uh, Soldier Knows Best. If you don't know Mark, uh, like we go way back, have Dom um, from, he does an amazing tech channel. I can link them, but uh, I just cannot thank the community enough for being able to give me a platform that I can do this stuff. So YouTube isn't showing my videos, so I make shorts because shorts are the new hotness, but those are cringe because they're shorts and I'm not a TikToker. And I'm like, people see those and they're like, I don't like shorts, so me and um, unsubscribe. And I'm like, but wait, I'm doing really, really cool things that you should definitely check out. Um, but none of that is being shown because it's just serving videos to a very, very small percentage of my subscribers. Anyhow, please let me know if you guys have been affected by not seeing my videos or not having YouTube sh be show <laughs> showing them. No, more importantly, um, the, the exploit. Like, what have you guys been doing? I'd love to know some resources. Um, I will totally see you at the Geek Beacon Festival, very first ever, um, and I will talk nerdy to you later.